Hey, hi, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. That felt weird. Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to that. that felt even worse. That felt so robotic. What am I doing? How do I do intro? Hey, hi, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon, and if you're new here, I make bookish content, bookish content journaling content movie content tv content i just i do all the things <laughs> and if you're interested then stick around and see if you like some of them today i'm going to be reading some five star reviews of my worst reads of 2021 this is going to be interesting because i don't really i don't really have strong opinions to other people's opinions of my opinions does that make any sense <laughs> i think that everyone's entitled to their own opinion and i respect and appreciate everyone else's thought process essentially um i do have certain favorites that i think when i do this reverse where i read one star reviews of my favorites i think it will hurt a little bit more because there are some favorites that i give a little more love to than maybe other people do but yeah, everything said in this video is my own opinion and I do respect the opinion of others. So please take everything in this video with a grain of salt. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I do have my handy dandy laptop here and I am going to be reading off of this. So if I look down, it's because I'm reading off of this and it just seems like the easiest way to do this. So first up, we have The Cousins by... Karen M. McManus. I did not enjoy this. I forced myself to read this. I gave it a two stars. I I did not like this. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I will say that 23% of users marked this as a five stars, 42 a four stars, 27 a three stars, five a two stars, and 1% a one star. And I'm in the 5% range because I gave this a two stars. Okay. Karen M. McManus has to continue writing books or I will light myself on fire. Private Islands, Fortunes, Murder, Disinheritance, can it get any more interesting? I've been thinking for a while now that The Cousins may be my new favourite book by Karen McManus, but I can't decide. I can't even compare them because they're all so different. I love the plot twist she kept throwing and I actually grew attached to all four characters' POVs. Although I doubted Jonah at first, I ended up loving him. Okay, my experience with Karen M. McManus's work hasn't been the greatest. I really enjoyed One of Us Was Lying and I found Two Can Keep a Secret just okay. And then I didn't like The Cousins. So I feel like I fall on the more unpopular side of this this book because a lot of people really enjoy it which is totally fine like you're into what you're into um but this review says that they were attached to all four characters because it's from four characters point of view whereas on the other hand i had the complete opposite effect like i didn't connect with any of the characters and i didn't think that any of them were likable and like they just came across as spoil and whiny to me and it didn't make for a great read like I don't need to enjoy my characters like I don't have to have a likable character to enjoy a story but when all four characters are unlikable and the plot is very gimmicky and goes in a direction that you're like eh like I feel like it all adds up to be quite a disappointing read unfortunately so you do you boo but like I wouldn't be lighting myself on fire for Karen McManus books Ooh, that was shady. <laughs> I am a really big Karen McManus fan and the cousins did not disappoint. It features three cousins who haven't seen each other in years who are summoned to a small island off the coast of Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Can I not say that? It sounds like I'm saying Massachusetts, but I'm not. Massachusetts. Ma Massachusetts. Okay, we're going with Massachusetts because I can't say the actual name of this place. Wow. <laughs> They're summoned by their mysterious grandmother. They have never met. Their grandmother had turned her back on her own children, cut them off several years before. 
Millie, Aubrey and Jonah arrive on the island only to meet their grandmother who seemed shocked by their arrival. Who actually invited them to the island? What happened almost 20 years ago before to cause her to end her relationship with her children? What secrets and their own parents harbouring about the past? So that's like a summary of the book. As always, Karen McManus weaves together an intricate and clever story with several twists and turns throughout. I was generally shocked by the end of this one and never guessed the final twist. I really enjoyed all three of the cousins. The characters she write had depth and all felt real to and true to their age. I especially connected with Millie and felt for Aubrey. Jonah initially comes off as an asshole but quickly grows on you. I am already counting down to Karen's next book. I feel like everyone's connecting with these characters and I'm just like, why? But why though? Because to me, they were all 2D, had no depth and acted like spoiled children younger than what they actually were. Like in this review, it says that they acted their age. And I'm like, did they so? Did they? Because to me, it felt like they acted younger than what they were. Also, the situations that they were put in didn't really shine the best kind of spotlight on them. Am I just being really harsh or like, does anyone else agree with me? Like, I don't get me wrong. It wasn't the worst book I've ever read, but it just by no means was a five star read. And when I hear people connected with these characters, I just feel like I missed something because I didn't connect with these characters. I found the plot really gimmicky. The twists were meh and the ending was just like, okay. Like, it didn't feel like there was any urgency or high stakes. It just, it just felt like it was fine. I am so sorry if this is your favourite book. I do not mean any harm by this. That was very interesting. I loved every minute of this, of the second half of this book. Yes, I hated the first half of this book. Ooh, interesting. This is very interesting because this is a five star review and they hated the first part of the book. So like, maybe I'm not alone in feeling like this. Um, and considering they hated the first part of the book, immediately enjoyed the second and still five starred it is a very interesting rating system. I'd be very interested in how this person rates their books because I rate off of gut feeling more than most of the time. If I struggle with a book, I will copile it, which I love, I love copile. Um, if I struggle with exactly how I feel, I will put it through Copile and get a gist for what my original score would be. But if I if I five star a book, it's more instantaneous five star. It's like, I love this. This is staying on my shelves. I'm never getting rid of it. So I, I just, I find that interesting. The ending really made it up for it though. Holly Jackson, please read this book and you will know a good murder mystery. Oh, the shade the shade i feel like that's really shady um also i think that um holly jackson's a good girl's guide to murder i've heard nothing but great things about and i feel like it's probably better rated i'm gonna look that up in a second let's read on i was about to dnf it but it got so much better and that ending is chef's kiss perfection i had who i suspected in mind but this blew the roof off of it it was incredible and no I'm not putting anything in spoilers because I'm not ruining anyone's day and you can also read it for yourself but also seriously Holly Jackson you shouldn't be taking notes while you're reading this book maybe your next book will be better I feel like that is like that's really a bitchy thing to say like why are you comparing these authors um work like I understand comparing authors work when it's like um like if you're comparing something specific I feel like I've only heard amazing things about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder yeah I feel like this reviewer is being really snidey to Holly Jackson I also feel like she's maybe burned by that book in some way shape or form because The Cousins has a 3.81 rating over 7,910 reviews Whereas A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson has a 4.37 over 27,907 reviews. So in my mind, even though everything is very subjective, books are very subjective, favourites, again, five stars are very personal. I believe that given these two stats, I would pick up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder quicker than I would pick up The Cousins. I feel like 
even though this means virtually nothing and I could still hate A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I feel like I would have more hope that this would be the better pick. But also just like don't be that snidey to other authors like please that's that's a bit mean like at, at least put in nicely at least be like I wish Holly Jackson had some of these aspects like pinpoint some aspects she would have liked Holly Jackson to have or even just being like I wanted this kind of feeling from A Good Girl's Guide to Murder but it's not what I got I'm glad I got it in this book would have been nicer but I feel like being like take tips take notes like this is what a good thriller is I feel like that's really bitchy just my opinion the next book is quite interesting because uh, we have After We Fell by Anna Todd and this is actually the third book in the After series and this was a drag yeah like I enjoyed the last one um more than after Ever Happy I think it's called more than the rest of them I feel like it was a good kind of wrap up to the story um and I feel like this one just wasn't that great if out of any of these on these list I can see five stars being really like personal is this book I think this book has like a cult following it was on Wattpad I know a lot of people that love this book and even though I can see why people love this book I personally didn't like don't get me wrong, I love like a trashy romance, toxic, dramatic story, but this wasn't it for me. Like, I feel like it just didn't give me what I wanted and I can get what I want from like Kindle books or like the Dimly trilogy by Estelle Maskim. Like, they give me all of the drama, the romance, the kind of like trashy kind of like... <sighs> I don't know how to explain it but like like it's like comfort food like that's what I want from these books and this did not comfort me in the fucking slightest so I feel like I know what it was trying to do it just didn't do it for me but I completely understand and respect why it did it for everyone else. This one everyone's wrote in like a an essay um, and that just shows that people do genuinely love this series. I cannot believe everything that happened in this book. It was one of those times where when I read the last page, I just stared at it. I didn't know what to do. Seriously, where are you, February? I feel like Tessa and Harden grew the most in this book. It was so wonderful to see Harden grow and change for the better. I got so sick of him not wanting to move to Seattle out of pure control issues. Tessa got so good at fighting back. It was great. She gave it to Harden when he really deserved it and then took care of him when he really needed it. It was just beautiful, beautiful and nerve-wracking. I was preparing myself for some kind of disaster after every chapter or POV change. Towards the end, you tend to wait for Harden to lose his cool like he always did, but he never does. This series is all sorts of wonderful. I can't wait to read the final book next month. So I will give this reviewer their due. In this book, Harden does grow up um, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, but also in this book we have a couple of plot points that I I just think shouldn't have been in there like there's like this attempted assault scene that really didn't need to be in there Um, there was something with Tessa's dad that didn't need to be in there like I just felt like there was things added into the plot that like this book could have been like 200 pages shorter that unnecessary shit could have been taken out and we could have focused on Hardin and Tessa and Hardin growing into the character he should be. And also, I don't want to put all the blame on Hardin because even though Hardin is toxic and controlling and has all these anger issues, Tessa also needs to stand up and defend herself a lot more than what she does. And again, this reviewer said it right. Hardin does grow up and be a bit better and Tessa does finally grow a backbone in this. I just feel like the book could have been a lot shorter and some of the gimmick plot points that had no reason to be there could have been left out. Next we have this one. This was long and I needed to stop several times to just process the back and forth between Hardin and Tessa. I loved the crazy, loved it. I feel like I am nuts for enjoying this series as much as I do. I was rarely ever bored and even though the audio was 24 hours long, I still really enjoyed this. Yeah, so again, like, this was a very long book and I just feel like it could have been 
it could have been cut down like a lot a lot a lot with the after series i feel like if you love it you fucking love it and it's favorite and you'll defend it and you just you five star it whereas i can see the good and the bad in these they were fast reads they were entertaining to say the least i also didn't take very many of these books seriously and if i want like i highly suggest that if you like the after series to read the dimly series by estelle mascom just simply because they gave me the same vibe but i think the dimly series was better written in my opinion i think the characters were better and i also think that some of the things that after failed to do dimly done really well and again going back to that girl that called out holly jackson and her review um that's not what i'm doing here these books are different i i do appreciate the work and the effort anna todd put into after and again there are some things i enjoy about these series that's why i read it i enjoyed that the characters were so so well done I, the characters in after were pretty much the sole purpose that i enjoyed the books to any extent because the characters were so well developed like i could literally tell you like a whole bio on these two main characters even the side characters i could tell you bios on them like i could tell you what this th these characters would do in a day i just feel like the plot lines that I wanted done better in After were done better in Dimly for me. So like they're both stand on their own right but I do think if you enjoy After you will enjoy, enjoy the Dimly series and highly recommend it. And the last review of this book I have here is I thought this book was so good. This is without a doubt my favourite book series that I have ever read. The whole series is absolutely beautiful but at the same time so heartbreaking. I will definitely agree on that one. This, like, there is beautiful moments in this series and there's definitely heartbreaking moments that go along with them. And they're done so, they're done in a way that makes the heartbreak more heartbreaking and it makes the moments that are actually really nice and good to be beautiful, even though in general terms, it's just the way things kind of should be between love interests but yeah I understand that very much there are so so many times while reading this that I find myself actually laughing out loud or being really upset and feel tears forming not many books can take you through the emotional ride and I'm so happy I found these books I can't wait to read the fourth and final book in this series okay so again with this reviewer I don't agree with the laughing out loud thing. I don't find Anna Todd's writing funny at all. Like, I didn't laugh once. So, like, fair play to you if you found this funny, but I didn't. Um, I do remember being upset and frustrated at this book. I did not form any tears. Um, so I will give Anna Todd their due. They do evoke feelings. Whether those feelings are good or bad to completely depends on the reader. But yeah, um, again, like they invoke feelings. I could literally do a whole review on this book series, even though I didn't like it that much. I still read all of the books. I still find, found them entertaining. I still have points that I did like in the stories, um, mainly the characters. But I, I just... They're not favourites and that's okay, you know, and I completely respect everyone who loves this series. I am not judging your book taste. I literally read Kindle Smart. I read, I just, I read anything I can get my hands on really, but like Kindle Smart, motorcycle romances, like I love me some good drama, some good sexy time. So I'm definitely not judging what you enjoy. Um, For me, this just didn't work, but... I do enjoy this kind of story, which is why I originally picked these up. I think I'm going to have to do a part two to this because I'm actually having so much fun. This is going to be the last book that I read the reviews from, but if you're interested in another part to this, please like this, subscribe, comment down below. Um, I'm still going to do it anyway, but like that would show me that you would like to see it. And yeah, the book I have here is Good Me, Bad Me by Ali Land, and I want to preface this by saying that 
just because these were my worst reads of 2021 does not mean they were one stars i very rarely give out one stars the cousins was a two star after we fell was a two star and this was a three star so by no means like a horrible book but just not great i also have a vlog for this one do i have a vlog for after as well i think i do if i have vlogs for when i read these books i'll leave it linked down below so you can watch my thoughts form as i read them but without further ado let's read some five star reviews so i probably should preface this one by saying i feel like the cousins and after were pretty big releases that a lot of people know basic knowledge of good me bad me i haven't heard huge amounts about so this follows a daughter whose mum was a serial killer and she is now in her mum's now in prison and she is living with like a kind of foster family and this foster family is like keeping her until she goes to trial to be the like prime witness to her mum's case and i will say that some things were done really well in this book i did enjoy the the plot the plot was really good and i just think the execution could have done with a little bit more this book was a little bit longer there was a little bit more interaction between the daughter and the mom or even just like even if there was like another like added in thing like journals written from the mom's point of view or court transcripts or like therapist notes of her mom it would have really made up quite a lot of the missing gaps that i felt that were in this story so i have this review here that says I'm disappointed there wasn't more information on Mummy or any actual interaction between Millie and her mum, but I realised this was supposed to be about Millie and not her mum. It was a good psychological read and I didn't take and it didn't take long, so the time frame on here says something different. The ending became predictable at some point, but that didn't make it any less good. Um again, like I agree with this. I think there could have been more interaction or more information about the mum and this reviewer is definitely right the story is meant to be about millie and not her mum but i think to get the story of millie you need to have her mum involved because that is why millie is the way she is because of her mum and the interactions they have yeah like it did become predictable i believe this five star review is very good like i think that even though i rated this a three star and it was on my worst of 2021 list I still agree with this review even though I rated it a, a whole two stars below it. I think it's very fair. Next we have this one. It took me a few days to recuperate from this book. The main character got under my skin into my head from the very first page. The fact I could empathise with her feelings of being haunted by another person rang so true that I felt totally invested with her narrative. I read a quote from the French actor Juliette Binoche a while ago which says damaged people are dangerous. I remember finding this odd but after reading this book I certainly see the reason why she may have made that claim. Being mentally and physically damaged from a very young age must have been devastating effects on a person's ability to switch off the mechanisms that allowed them to survive the horror in the first place. I highly recommend this book even though it shook me, made me very sad at times and made me realise how fragile and flawed kindness can be. This this review is a hard one because I I think because this reviewer related to the narration of the main character of this story um, leads me to believe that there is a deeper reason why this book shook them and made them feel the way that they felt and that's totally valid it is not for me to like judge someone's personal feelings at all so like i am very glad that this person enjoyed this book and like had such a visceral reaction to it like good i love when people find favorite books and by the sounds of it this became a favorite book I do like that they quoted um, this actress saying damaged people are dangerous. I too believe that. I do think that if you're hurt from a very young age, as this review says, that that sticks with you and you have to like compartmentalize. No, what is it called? Compartmentalize your thoughts to be able to survive in certain situations. Um, and yeah, like this this review is true 
I cannot, like, I cannot debunk any of this because at the end of the day, this review is based on feeling. And I think if you feel this way about this book, then I understand completely why it's a five stars. I didn't relate to the character, the narration. I didn't really feel like we got enough of the, like, the mum and daughter dynamic or the daughter and, like, foster family dynamic. Um, I do like um Millie's relationship with the like stepsister she has foster sister um I think their relationship was the most well developed throughout the whole book and I did like the ending I thought the ending was was quite well done but I didn't feel any of this unfortunately when I read but yeah I'm very glad that this reviewer did and found a favorite book and the final review I have here is this one Oh my god, what a read this was. I'm gasping for air right now. To be treated very badly by a parent is unbelievable. To be with a mother who treats other kids not only bad but torments them. Torments them and kills them and a 15 year old daughter being aware of this is outstandingly shocking. Agreed. Hmm. When Annie informs the police of this at tender age of only 15, you can gasp and feel her emotions. The last victim was one that broke the camel's back for Annie. She was very close to the victim. The author made you feel the emotionally pull between Annie and the mother's last victim. The question she undergoes in court is astonishingly brought home. How a child brought up with overbearing mind-turning parents can have an effect on your psychological mind. Listening out behind a screen for just the breathing sounds of her mother. Annie's name is changed to Millie to help protect her and Millie is trying hard not to let the bad overtake the good within her. She doesn't want to be like her mother. This is a chilling book that will not only give you goosebumps but will make the hairs stand up on the back of your neck. Okay, I I do think this book had its good points and it is very emotionally devastating reading about a 15 year old whose mother kills children. Um, That is hard in any kind of writing style no matter if it's good or bad but I just don't think like how do I say this I just don't think that the mother was built up enough and the relationship between Millie or Annie and her mother wasn't built up enough for when her mum took this last victim for me to feel like it was a betrayal. I wanted I wanted to have that relationship really set in stone so, so that when her mum did commit this murder and betray her daughter for the last time, that is like what really gut punches you and makes you feel like this is like so terrifying and heartbreaking and you just want to take the main character and just like run away and take her somewhere better, you know? like. I do think that certain things were done well. I do think this plot, like 